What is up guys? It is Boston McManus here with a video on the, I would say, not tear down, but uh, removal of the backplate of the Lenovo Y510P. Um, this is a very basic video on how to remove the backplate, this whole backplate cover here, to get to the internals. So you can replace the hard drive, you can check the wireless card, replace the wireless card, you can replace the RAM, and other components internally that you guys would like to mess with. Um, the Ultra Pay is over here. This is for your graphics card. Now, first of all, you need to remove the battery. To remove the battery, undo that clip over here, undo this one, hold on to it while you're moving it, and then it slides out just like that. Now once you have that removed there's a little switch right here you pull that out and then you pull out same as the battery one stays locked out and the other one you have to hold down and then the ultra bay just slides right out like such. Now to get the back plate off you do not need to remove this ultra bay but I just do it just as a safety precaution so there's one less thing to be damaged in there and as well just so I can check the fan blades, make sure everything is in proper working order. There's no dust build up. Everything looks, you know, good and in good working condition. So we set that off to the side over there. Now to get into this laptop, there are nine screws. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sorry, I kind of went out of order there. Once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you can start in any order you would like to. It doesn't really matter. When putting it back together, I like to do a cross pattern just so I don't crack any of the plastic because applying pressure on these screws in one place can cause the plastic to crack if you put too many screws in one place at one time without evenly putting in the screws and applying pressure just like a processor uh, heat sink that you would do for that um, it's just my personal preference I've never had an issue with it before but I've always done it this way just to do uh, just as a safety precaution so that way I don't damage any of the plastic housing of the laptop because that does depreciate the value, it depreciates the way it works because when the laptop is completely sealed with all the plastic housing surrounding it, it does help manage where the airflow goes and which components the airflow cools. If you crack the plastic in the laptop that can affect the cooling of it, that can affect the structure and stability of the laptop itself and some of the components can be damaged when you transport the laptop so for this screw over here you're gonna have to flip it over and let the screw fall out the other ones are easy to get out by yourself just these two side screws over here because they are recessed into the laptop itself so you just unscrew it flip it over let it fall out into your hand make sure you do not lose them now, I do not, normally when I take apart a computer, I have like a little container, so that way I can put the different types of screws in there, but for this, I'm just taking off the back plate, so there are no other screws that need to be undone. It's just those screws right there. So, for me personally, I lift from this corner right here. You can lift from this corner as well, but I found it, this one gives a little more resistance than this one does. As you can see, this one has the least amount of clips over here so you just pull up pull up gently just slide your finger along the cracks you'll feel it start to give give it a little jiggle don't do it too viciously otherwise you will damage the little plastic retaining clips on here and it won't stick together as well as it did once before so in here you can see some padding for the hard drive in my case that doesn't really matter because I have a solid state drive in there there's some thermal foil right here to help uh, spread out the heat this right here is a speaker port. These are cooling vents. You can see that they are clear and it does have a dust filter on there, which I think is pretty cool. So set that to the side. And now you can see that these are the guts of the computer. You can see that I have my G-Skill Ripjaw RAMs right here. 
you can see that this is the wireless card, this is the heatsink for both the processor and the graphics card. The processor is right under here and the graphics card leads right over under here. It's next to this graphics card over here. Um, I'm not going to go that deep into tearing it apart, getting this uh, graphics card and CPU exposed. Uh, I have no reason to. Um, most of you shouldn't either unless it fails. If it does fail, go ahead and shoot me a video and I will tear it down even further and show you guys how to replace the processor and the internal GPU. Um, if you ever have to take out the keyboard, it's the same process. You remove the back panel and then there's keyboard markings on the screws. It looks like a keyboard. So you remove the screws that have that keyboard marking and then you will be able to remove the keyboard from the opposite side. So this is the wireless card. You can always tell it's the wireless card because of these two cables right here, the black and white. These are your antenna cables for the wireless card. These typically for most laptops run through the display and run around the circumference of the display, the outside of display, so you receive the best signal quality. Some laptops, they just run internally inside down here by the motherboard. Um, other laptops, they run along the front of the um, computer right here. For me personally, I like it best when the laptop runs the cables through the display. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but the black cable goes over here to this side and the white cable goes over here to this side. You can see the white cable sticking out and the black cable sticking out. So that is your wireless card. I know there are some people who have had issues with the wireless card not working, failing, something like that. So if you want to purchase a new graphics card, it is extremely simple to do to replace it. You just pull this cable up. And please remember guys, before you touch anything inside the computer, ground yourselves. I have a lamp here right next to me that I touched before I started working on any of this. So please ground yourself so you don't shock any of your equipment. Like I was saying, you just pull this cable up gently. And then same with the other one. You just lift up on it gently. I'm using a screwdriver here just to catch the cable in my finger. Lift up and there is a small black screw right under that black cable. You just undo that screw and it starts to relieve pressure from the wireless card. It popped up and then just like RAM it pops up and then it slides out. So that right there is your wireless card. Very tiny, a lot tinier than the old graphics cards that I used to work on back when I was in the laptop game. Uh, I've been in the desktop game for quite a while but I figured I'd get back into the laptop game because I am in the military and I do move a lot so laptops are definitely easier for me so to reinstall you do the same thing you put it in at an angle and then once you do not see any of the gold circuitry exposed anymore you just go ahead and push it down ever so gently so you do not snap the card in half I have seen it before where people just snap the circuitry off in the socket it's not very good at all. So then you screw it back down like so and then make sure it's kind of hard to mess up because the cables you can tell which cable goes where. Make sure you put the cables back to where they go. Remember where they go because there are no markings on here. There's an A and B over the sockets but the cables are not labeled with an A or B marking whatsoever. So. There's no way for you to be able to tell what cable goes where unless you remember it when you took it off. Same thing as before. Instead of pulling it off, you're just pushing on until you hear a small little click. You'll hear a small click and that lets you know that it's installed. Moving on, we have the M2 SATA drive here. This is the SSD caching that they like to do with the internal hard drive. This is the hard drive over here. It's a 360 gig gigabyte solid state drive. It came with a one terabyte drive and I use that as an external drive. Um, so that was the hard drive here and it had an M2 SATA card in here which I removed because I didn't even feel the need to use it. As you can tell um, mine didn't even come with the M2 SATA connector point. Mine is not soldered in because when I purchased it I opted out of the SSD caching. I just went with the 
internal solid or internal one terabyte drive because I knew I would not be using the one terabyte and caching. I knew I'd just use that as an external and use the solid state as my main. So I didn't even opt for them to put that in. So there's no connector for it, but it's the same as RAM, same as a wireless card. It will have a slot here. You put it in an angle, push it down, and then screw it in. You can see the screw port here. So that answers the M2 SATA port questions for some of my viewers. I know they had questions about that. And that's where that goes right there. Most of them will have that little connector. Now for RAM, RAM is very simple to install and uninstall. There's clips on either side of the RAM right here. You just pull out and then the RAM pops up like so, just like the wireless card. And now as you can see, this is the Ripjaw G-Skill RAM. It's eight gigabytes and I have two of these. It is 1600 megahertz DDR3. The timings are 99928 and it's 1.35 volts, very low voltage for these core um, Core i processors, the i-core processors from Intel, the fourth generations use very low voltage so it's good to have RAM that's very low voltage as well to match with that processor. So same thing with the bottom one, the, th the uh, prongs just slide out and to put back in, same as the wireless card, same as the SSD, you put it in at an angle like so. No more of the gold circuitry is exposed. And then you push down and it clips back in. You don't have to move the clips, touch the clips, nothing. It just pushes down. Now with me, with these rip jaws, they have this little heat sink on it. So the bottom RAM module, I had to push a little bit harder and lift up on the clips to let them scoot over and lock itself in because the RAM heatsink was pushing against the back on the motherboard and wasn't pushing in all the way because the stock RAM that came in this does not have the heat sinks on it so it was able to sit very easily. I actually have the stock RAM right here. This is a um, this is the packaging for the G Scale Rip Draws. Uh, this is a RAM that came, one of the RAM modules that came with it. It is a 2 gigabyte module because this came with 6 gigabytes of RAM. It came with a 4 gigabyte stick and a 6 gigabyte stick, or uh, I'm sorry, a 4 gigabyte stick and a 2 gigabyte stick. And this is one of the 2 gigabyte sticks. Uh, I have an HP laptop for my wife that she uses and it had 4 gigabytes stock. So I took the 4 gigabyte stick card out of here and I put it in the HP laptop because it was only one four gigabyte stick luckily it wasn't two two, gig two two gigabyte sticks it was just a one four gigabyte so I was able to put that other one double her RAM she's definitely seen speed improvement but yeah as you can tell this is the two gigabyte RAM stick that comes stock in the Y510 P with six gigabytes this is the two gigabyte version and the Memory modules are very tiny and there's no heat sinks on them. It's just this plastic uh, sticker that has the information about the RAM on there. So I took that out very quickly. Like I said, before I even turned this computer on, I installed this RAM and I installed this solid state drive. So that's it for RAM. Moving on to the hard drive. The hard drive is located right here. It is a very secure system. I like the way it's set up. Uh, it can be potentially you know difficult not difficult but a little bit tedious because there's a lot of screws and my wife's HP the hard drive just has two rubber grommets one here and one here and it sits down in there so it's anti-vibration but it's not held in very well when you open it the hard drive can just fall out so it's quick to get the hard drive in and out but it's not very safe whereas this it's very secure there's two screws right here you need to unscrew on the bracket itself and then once that is done you slide back you grab the bracket and you slide back just like that and then you lift with this tab and then this is the solid state drive right here uh, it's the Corsair 4 series it is SATA 3 so it's 6 gigabits per second uh, it's 360 gigabytes. I don't know if you guys can see too much of the hard drive in there. I really don't want to take it out because since this hard drive is slimmer, you can see that it's you can see that it's slimmer than the cage itself. 
the actual hard drive fit that entire cage perfectly. This one's slimmer, so you gotta hold it at an angle to be able to get those screws holes to line up. But on the hard drive itself, there's four screw holes on either side to keep it in this cage. You just take out those screws, take out the hard drive, put in the solid, solid state hard drive, and screw those screws back in. And then reverse process for getting it back into the uh, container right here, the little slot for the hard drive. You set it down all the way to the back. Do not line these screw holes up with the screw holes on here because it needs to slot into place. So you gently set it down and once you have it set down, you push, make sure it's lined up with the connectors. And once you have it lined up with the connectors, you go ahead and push in until you can't push anymore and the screw holes are lined up. Don't force it. If you force it, you can break the connectors and you can also ruin the hard drive cage. Uh, I've seen people, I've seen this design before. I've seen it on a Gateway and a um, Dell before. I've seen people where they push and then their finger slips and it comes up and they've completely destroyed the connector because you can see it lifts up and down just a little bit. They've lifted it up and the hard drive went flying and the connectors are now broken off inside the laptop or vice versa. The connectors are broken off on the hard drive from the laptop and that is not fun to replace at all. So after that's back in, after your hard drive is newly installed, get the two screws that you unscrewed it with and put it back inside the two screw holes that it came out of originally. Now I am going to show you how to put the back panel back on. That is the basics of the inside of the computer. There's an M2 SATA port right here, the RAM right here, we got the hard drive right here and the wireless card right here. Um, this is a port for the Ultra Bay, which can be either the graphics card like mine is, a, another hard drive, uh, another cooling fan, or an optical drive. And this is the heat sink area for the CPU, which is right there, and GPU, which is right under here. So to get, in order to get it back on, make sure you orient the case right, the uh, back panel correctly. You can see that it fits over here because the fans are there. Also, it has these two little arm pieces. The arm pieces, it, I mean, you can tell. It just obviously will not fit this way. You can see there's still components exposed over here. So just go ahead and orient it right. Lay it down flat on the uh, computer itself. And then just go ahead and start pushing slightly until all the clips are put in. I like to go from one side and just work, you know, up and down and then work over to the other side, pushing down slightly because you don't want to damage your display. Remember it's left resting on the display. So you do that and then once you're done with that, you just go ahead and start screwing back in the screws for the laptop. And there remember there's nine screws. So however many you took out, remember to put that many back in because it will be a bad day if you're missing a screw because it can be less sturdy and you do not want to be missing a screw, especially if you, if you have to send it back to the manufacturer. They will not accept it if there are screws missing. And now one other thing I want to show, tell you guys is everything I just showed you, none of it voids the manufacturer's warranty. Everything I showed you is user friendly. It is something that you can do. And with a gaming enthusiast laptop like this, they do actually suggest that you do things to this because they know that people are going to want to upgrade their computers eventually over time. And that is why they made it so simple for you to access everything. One back panel removed and you can access the RAM, the M2 SATA, the hard drive, and the wireless card, you know pretty much everything you need to upgrade your computer quickly and make it fast. So as you can see right here, I am doing the cross pattern for the screws. I'm not putting screws in the same side. I am doing them cross pattern up and down and left and right. So that way I do not shatter any of the plastic housing. When you're putting in these screws, do not over tighten because they do strip very easily. The um, the plus symbol, their Phillips head, the plus symbol on the screw is very tiny. It is extremely sensitive and it's not very deep inside the screw. So just be careful. Apply pressure when you're screwing them in so you don't slip over it and start stripping the screw.